Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church. It is a joy and a blessing to be in worship with you today on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, Christmas is right around the corner, just a few short days away. And so we hope that this worship service of song and of message is a powerful one for you as we prepare for the coming of our Savior. As we begin our time of worship together, please join me in a quick word of prayer. Gracious, loving God, we give thanks to you for this day, for this opportunity to gather as your beloved children in worship and praise to your mighty love and grace. We ask today that during our time together, God, that you are with us, that through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, you use this music and message and scripture to transform us into the image that you call us to be. We ask all this in your son's holy name. Amen. Hi, Asbury friends. Good morning. I'm Baker Curris. I'm the stewardship chair this year. I'm very proud to serve in that capacity, even though it's been an odd year. The pandemic has changed a lot of things, including this stewardship campaign. I hope you've enjoyed the vignettes that we've shared thus far from Susan Jolay, Scott and Mary Noble, and Brian and Lauren Hall and his beautiful girls. I wanted you to see how the church is moving in other people's lives. I didn't want this campaign to be just about the money. I wanted you to understand that what we do at our church makes a difference in people's lives and, and we need to give what we've gotten to other families in the future. I think this pandemic is going to give us a lot of opportunity to really move in the community. People will see that there is a great need for meaning in their lives and I think as this pandemic recedes, perhaps we'll have opportunity. 
We're doing well. We do have to raise money, though. This is about funding our budget, and we're, we're moving in that direction, but we're not nearly where we need to be. We need to get our cards in. Thus far, we've probably funded about 30% of our budget. Uh, I know there are other cards in the mail, but we need to get our cards in by the 27th. Please do that. Please consider that, uh, if you can possibly do that. As you know, part of the campaign is also to retire the building debt. We owe about $50,000, and I'm very pleased to tell you that we've already raised almost 60% of that balance in special extraordinary gifts, over and above gifts, to pay that debt down. I hope you'll participate, I, and it matters not how much. That's not the point. I just want everyone in our church to have that feeling of participating and helping out with respect to that debt, to honor the people that moved our church back in the early 80s out to its current location and to honor all those who have served, all of our wonderful pastors and staff and all the volunteers that we've had. We need to honor them by paying that debt and that will leverage us into 2021 so that we can really move ahead with some of our programming and we could do so much if we had that extra money. So please consider getting your card in by the 27th. We'll consecrate those cards and dedicate those cards and I hope celebrate repayment of the debt on January the 3rd. So please, if you have questions, call me. My number is 501-831-0325. I'll answer any question about the budget, and I hope you'll see how this church is changing lives, yours and others, and participate fully in this campaign. Thank you. Jesus, look down from the sky and 
stay by my side till morning is Jesus, I ask Thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in Thy tender care and take us to heaven to live with We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity. God with us right now. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might've been you or your daughter. It might've been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This, in, in a confused and confusing world, is the peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that Emmanuel came, is with us now, and he will come again. O come, O come, Emmanuel. No. 
And will you join with me now in a word of prayer? O oh God of incarnation, the one who chose to come and live among us, we know that you are a God of interruption. This year has been full of so many interruptions, most of which has, have caused us grief and pain and much anxiety. And yet here, just a few days before we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Emmanuel, God with us, help us to remember that this is the greatest interruption of all. And while Christ is good news, he also brought interruption into the world. He interrupted cycles of, of sickness and death. He interrupted assumptions about power and might. He interrupted lives, calling forth the disciples from their vocations to come and be his followers, healing people in the midst of their lives so that they were turned upside down and put back into society and their families. And most of all, defeating death, even death through the resurrection and his life among us once again. Oh God, as we grieve the interruptions of this holiday season, help us also to see them through the lens of Christ's life where we would have cantatas and orchestras help us to see the quietness and the gentleness of a few voices and the sound of bells as a blessing. Where we would have grand celebrations with family this year, help us to remember that family crosses boundaries of distance and time and we are together even when we are apart. And, oh God, we praise you and thank you for the sense of release we have experienced this year around shopping and busyness and all those preparations that we have laid aside. God, in these final days of Advent, help us to read your scripture daily, to seek your presence in our lives, and, and to pray not only for the sake of those we love, but for your interrupting power to come into the world and do what it did so long ago, interrupt cycles of disease and death. So we pray for all those who are ill and ask that you would pour your blessing upon them. We pray for those suffering from addiction and pray that you would break the hold that drugs and alcohol have on their lives. We pray for all those who have no one else to pray for them and ask that you would lead them here where we can be a welcome rest. 
Oh God, we pray for your interrupting power to come back into the world that we might know truly your presence with us. A presence that empowers the church to do great things in your name. Help us not to be content with merely coming together, but fill us with enthusiasm and vision in how we can be part of your changing the world through the presence and power of Christ. How can we heal the sick, feed the hungry, help the lost find their way home, gather the children and send out the youth. And Lord, as we make our final preparations for the grand Christmas celebrations in our own homes and, and lives, we pray that you would help us to remember what we have instead of what we don't. Let us see joy in each other's faces, whether that is in person or virtually. Help us to enjoy the gifts that we can exchange, knowing how carefully they were chosen and how intentionally they were placed under the tree. And above all, fill us with a sense of generosity that is no less than the generosity and love that brought you to earth, that brought you to tabernacle against us, uh, with us, that brought you here so that we could sing and pray, O oh come, O oh come, Emmanuel. In the spirit, we pray the prayer that the Lord taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we continue our journey toward the manger this morning with Mary's song, which is found in the first chapter of Luke. You may recall that Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who suddenly, as an elderly woman, had become pregnant after years and years of infertility. And it was at the point where she meets Elizabeth and Elizabeth offers a blessing that Mary responds with what is known as the Magnificat or Mary's song. This is what she said. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, to prepare to preach this morning, I listened to many arrangements of the Magnificat. I sat for over an hour just scrolling through one after another. I heard, I 
heard this song in Gregorian chant. I heard it um, in a mature operatic soprano voice and then I heard it to a teenager singing to a rock beat. I never would have imagined it. But the Magnificat seems to translate beautifully into any genre of music, ancient or modern, rock or classical, musical theater or folk. Now I confess that I did not hear any rap arrangements nor reggae, but why not? Mary's song, this song of praise belongs to all people everywhere. Anyone who has ever been blessed beyond mere words can sing Mary's song. Anyone who has ever cried out to God for help in a time of trouble can sing Mary's song. Anyone who puts her trust in God or anyone who desires to put his trust in God can sing Mary's song. It is that magnificent, this Magnificat. Now scholars point out the similarities between Mary's song and other songs of praise found in ancient Israel in the First Testament of Scripture. There was Miriam's song that she sang and danced as the Hebrews reached the safety of the other side of the Red Sea and saw the waters come down upon Pharaoh and his chariots. Deborah sang when God defeated the Canaanites and she stood before her army victorious and free. And then there's Hannah's song. The song of a mother whose long-suffering battle with infertility finally ended with the birth of a precious son over whom she sang a song before handing him over to the temple where he would serve God his whole life long. This chorus of faithful women literally sing us into Christmas. Certainly, Mary's Magnificat remembers God freeing people from slavery. She sings of a God who takes a bunch of nobodies and calls them somebodies in his name. Isn't that what God has done again for Mary? When he has taken this ordinary girl who will now be known forever as the mother of God. Mary sings us into Christmas, echoing the song of God's victories over powers of oppression and death. God, you see, is in the reversal business. Mary has been taught this from early infancy, and now her song boldly reaches back and gives voice to God's love and concern for all who have too little, for those who suffer from hunger or loneliness or disease, for the powerless who will eventually be called the meek, the hungry, and the persecuted, the ones Mary's son will call blessed. God will write the world for them. And for those with too much, the proud, the full, the bullies, Mary sees that they may finally be put in their places. Mary sings us into Christmas with a song of ecstasy, the joy of giving life, 
and the bitter sweetness of every mother who knows that the life you nurture is yours but only a short time. Mary sings a mother's song offering all that she is and all that she has and her most precious gift of all back to God. Mary's song is a song of praise for all the faithful who walk the way of the real world where memories of better times infuse and fuel our hope for what is coming. Mary is able to see God at work and praises God's divine intrusion into what she had feared was normal. Mary proclaims that God is coming. Mary proclaims that God's presence always changes things. And Mary raises her voice in song for change and transformation as she holds within her heart the truth that she too will be changed. Well, my friends, Mary's song is a song in the midst of hard work. Her song is a gift that we all can sing too. We can join with her, knowing that God is present in the world, that God is busy reversing what is not good into goodness and life. That God God has power over a virus. God stands ready to do battle with even the gates of hell. And it is God, our God, who is bending the arc of the world towards justice and mercy so that everyone will have a place at the table, God's table of plenty and love. So sing, Mary, sing. Sing with Miriam, with Deborah, with Hannah. Sing, my friends, sing. Sing Anna and Caleb, Nick, Diana, and Baker. Sing, sing anyone, anywhere who longs for Christmas, for the very presence and power of God to intrude into our lives and transform the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
cherubim and seraphim thronged the air, but his mother joy it's been to be in worship with all of you today. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, a special thank you to our Asbury Choir and to Jenny and Kelly and Anna uh, for sharing their beautiful gifts with us this morning. Uh, we hope that this has been a powerful time for you and that God has spoken to you and through you during this time of worship. Just a few announcements before we get out of here today. Uh, don't forget to tune in tonight at 7 p.m. on YouTube as we continue our worship series, The Birth of a Savior. Uh, and then this coming Thursday is Christmas Eve. Uh, we'll be offering a 4 o'clock service in the WAC. That's our contemporary service at 4 o'clock. A 6 o'clock service here in the sanctuary. Uh, both of those will be live streamed. And then at 8 o'clock that night, uh, we will wrap up our series, Birth of a Savior, as well. So we hope that you tune in for that. And then on Christmas Day at 11 a.m. on our YouTube channel, uh, we will have a special Christmas Day devotional. So we hope that uh, you take time to be with us as we give worship and praise to a loving God who came to be with us in his son, Jesus Christ. As we leave this time together, please receive this blessing. Serve your God with patience and with passion. Be deliberate in living out your faith. Be steadfast in celebrating the spirit that works within you. And may peace be your way in the world. God loves you. Go in peace. <laughs>